tased uh, vehicles, those armored vehicles that were used in Ferguson, all have bullet marks on the side from people shooting at the cops. If it weren't for that equipment, that so-called militarized equipment, we'd be burying cops. There'd be dead cops. Well, that's how some are now weighing in on a new plan from the White House impacting local police departments. We told you the White House is banning federal agencies from giving local police military-style equipment. And it comes in the wake of the controversy over a militarized police response to the unrest in Ferguson last summer. Well, joining me today for a local take on this is Captain Doug Shoemaker with the Jefferson City Police Department. And Captain, what's your take? You know, we kind of heard from the Police Officers Association in St. Louis. What's a local take here in Memphis? Missouri. Well, I think we're all feeling the same way. Uh, it's a bit confusing when, as you may recall, after 9-11, the federal government really changed the direction in which they would assist police agencies, going from prior to that time from community police-based grants, really enforcing that, um, that getting out there and talking to people and establish relationships through direct funding measures like school resource officer programs and community policing officers, directly to anti-terrorism and terrorism prevention programs. And with that came the Department of Defense programs that gave police agencies across the United States these types of pieces of equipment. It was the thinking that time of the federal government that law enforcement was going to be the first line of defense against local U.S.-based terrorism. And with that, of course, came the equipment to defend it. Now we're being criticized for using that same equipment that we, in fact, were given and encouraged to use by the federal government. So it's this strange change in, in uh, attitudes towards it. And I would agree with what Mr. Rorta said specifically in that the officers, what wasn't seen a lot of times on the news was the amount of violence against the officers and the officers just trying to protect themselves from all the things that took place. Yeah, because we saw both, you know, armored tanks and also body armor that people were wearing. Do you think it kind of can be a scary situation, though, when pe people are looking in on it? It almost does look like a military? I think it does. It depends on the perspective that's shown, though. I, I think too many times, more often than not, and lately, I would say all of us in law enforcement feel that we're not being accurately portrayed from both sides of the story. In other words, what's shown is, is what's seen as flashy and, and what's perhaps controversial. Without seeing the other side of all the, for example, the peaceful side of those protests, there were a lot of peaceful protests and a lot of officers interacting with people that wasn't shown because it wasn't quote unquote newsworthy. Mm -hmm. And that's the unfortunate part. And sometimes what's shown on the national news is, is really what people get their information from and it's not necessarily always accurate. Yeah, and sometimes also too, it was needed. Like we heard there, there were bullet holes in those trucks that were coming through and sometimes the same could be said for the armor that they have to wear protecting right. them. Uh, currently in Jefferson City, do you have any type of military, I mean, if you participated in this and receiving some of this equipment from federal agencies? We have, but to a lesser degree. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided it for our agency. We purchased through the sales tax, uh, the sales tax funding, uh, a what's called a Lenco Bearcat, and that's a law enforcement specific vehicle used for the protection of our officers in high risk situations. For example, uh, we practice with our SWAT team and with our uh, SWAT medics who are fire department members to go in and do extrication of personnel drills using that Bearcat. And the purpose of that Bearcat specifically is for the protection of those persons inside and the safe transportation of those persons to what could be, for example, an active shooter scene. Uh, the Bearcat will allow us to get into a scene where there is active fire, take a person, a wounded person, get them into the Bearcat and get them safely extricated from the scene. Um, and, and that for us is a public safety obvious issue. Mm -hmm. And that's something you said was purchased through sales tax, not through uh, federal agencies giving you this type of right. equipment. Right. For us, we did not decide that a vehicle like an MRAP was the most appropriate for what we needed it for. We thought a better use of, of, uh, of our time and our equipment and our training was something that was law enforcement specific and that's why we went with the Bearcat. Can you understand why some departments, maybe bigger size, would want the military style tanks? Perhaps so. You know, I mm -hmm. don't speak for those agencies, yeah. so everybody has their own needs and every agency does things differently. Do you see yourselves in, I mean, in the future, I mean, despite Despite these new restrictions, it's not that they're banning it and everyone has to put an end to this type of, uh, of use of these vehicles and equipment. You can still buy them from private sellers. Do you see the department doing that anytime soon? Well, you know, it depends. My concern, I think, with a lot of this is the fact that when we deal with riot situations, and things can turn very bad very quickly. Uh, we noticed, for example, in, in Texas, the issue of the ISIS 
things that can happen at any time, anywhere. So law enforcement really now more than ever walks this fine line of, of not appearing militaristic, but yet being prepared to take militaristic type action at any moment. So it's this balance that's nearly impossible to be perfect, and unfortunately we're held to this perfection standard. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like kind of policing has changed over the years? I mean, we've had conversations right. before where you've come on and I mean it really has taken a turn over the last five years or so. It has. Right now is more difficult than any other time in my career. Uh, all the brief 23 years I've been in with the agency, uh, it's it's changed dramatically and I would say over the past few years it's changed to such an extent that it's just a constantly evolving challenge uh, but it's something that we're prepared for and we're going to continue to evolve and, and do the best job we can. Well, as always, thanks for coming on. I appreciate your giving your thoughts on this latest matter. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Now, here's Brittany with a look at what she has.